Wow, this is professional looking. <laughs> What's happening? What up? How you doing? Great. Congratulations. Fantastic. Congrats on having the number one album. In Thank the you. Thank y'all yeah. for that. Yep. Uh, that's an, an amazing accomplishment. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. obviously not the end of your journey or anything like that, but it's it's certainly a a, a, a mountaintop of sorts well, for as long as you've been uh, doing this. Yeah, how's definitely, it, definitely an achievement. You know what I'm saying? Something that I held high, you know, in my early career. You know what I'm saying? It's still at the beginning, but I can definitely use this week as, you know, something that I can... Hold high, hold, 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 hold my head high over, you know? I listened to the album a few times and I'm just, you know, pretty much amazed at the, the musicianship and the, the complexity that you display on this album. Um, what was the process for you creating it? The first record that I ever did <clears throat> that was a quote unquote hit, you know what I'm saying, was Lotus Flower Bomb. And the conception of that record, everything from how the hook was delivered, who's gonna do the hook, the name of it. That was the first time in my career that I just crafted a song from top to bottom. Like, I wouldn't take no for an answer. Like, Miguel was like, oh, I don't know about this hook. I was like, nah, I know about this hook. Right. That's the one we want. So, and I saw the success of that, and I was just like, why don't I just do a whole album where I'm just like super anal about everything? Like, every, every drop in the beat, every drum we using, every filter we, we using and stuff like that, so. You know, I actually like spearheaded every everything that you hear on the album as far as the sound go. It, it really shows, um, and it's a it's a really diverse um, sonic kind of backdrop to you rhyming. Um, some of the songs on on the Gifted are are really interesting to me too. Um, there's one song called Bricks. Can you ex talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, you know, a lot of us come from environments where you know there's really not no way out. For real, like literally no way out. And on the cover of the album, you can see like, you know, I'm, I'm hinting at a, a lot of things, you know, with the girl and the, tr the drug transaction going on in the bottom left. And it's like, where we come from, is really sex and drugs is really the only way out. Like whether it be sex in the form of prostitution or pimping or strip clubs, you know what I'm saying? So it's really, if you don't play, if you can't play ball, it's really like, really that. Like, cause you see that work way more than going to school and becoming a doctor, you really don't really see that, you know what I'm saying? So I was just talking about the decisions a lot of my friends made growing up. You know, I have friends that, that's been in and out of jail since we was in high school, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm just trying to trying to shed some light on that, on that song. How difficult is it for you to, to talk about these types of topics considering a lot of popular music, in particular hip hop, it's kind of superficial in a lot of ways, you know. A lot of it, at least the 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 music with this type of depth, doesn't really get a lot of shine. The mo the frustrating part to me is that people, <clears throat> people, they always like be like, man, we need this type of music, this type of hip hop, this type. And then when they get it, they just be a, they they don't even really embrace it for real. You know what I'm saying? Like you cry for this, that, and the third type. You know, and then Kendrick go platinum, and then you were looking for other things to nitpick, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's that's the frustrating thing to me. That's the only thing that really frustrates me is like, it's like a, we live in a generation where there's no satisfaction in anything. I'm talking about LeBron, uh, whatever, like whoever, whatever, like there's nobody satisfied, nobody's like well done. Right, you know? right, that's, that's wild. Now this, but you know, a lot of people that do see what's going on realize this is a pretty exciting time for music, I mean, you know, not just uh, hip hop, but all music. But if you want to talk hip hop, then you have stuff like Kendrick, Jay Z just dropped the album, J. Cole. You know, there's a lot of artists. And right now, specifically, you're right in the middle of it all, really, you know, with Jay just dropping. Mm -hmm. And then uh, J. Cole, Kanye, you know, that whole thing. Even artists like Static Selector and stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about, you know, being in this part? Some say it's a renaissance, others I love say it's it. not. I, mean, I like the conversation. Yeah. Like, you know, like dropping an album anywhere in the vicinity of Jay Z and Kanye West is like playing on All Madden. Like you you ain't even you playing on Hall of Fame on two K. Like you you know they gonna steal it every time, right? Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so, you know, I, I ain't scared of nobody now. You know what I'm saying? I dropped the album a week before the greatest rap of all time drop. For the rest of my career I ain't scared of no none of y'all rap dudes ever in life. 
I just went up against a monster. That's what's up. You, you uh, constant. Well, in the last couple albums, at least, you referred to money versus legendary status. Speak on that a little bit. Money's good though. Don't get twisted. <laughs> um, like I like I said earlier, like it's just, it's so frowned upon in our generation to like desire to be great. Like we have a self-loathing that we do. It's, I can really only speak for like you know in black in the black community or the urban community. Like it's a self-loathing. Like you know you see all day black dark skin versus light skin and team light skin and all that. Like, what the hell is that? Yeah, yeah. I ain't never seen white people say team freckles versus team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's a self-loathing. Like and it's like I get a lot of hate because I I want to be great. I like I be like yo I want to be great someday. Like. Jay or Nas or Kanye, like they be like, you can't do that, you can't, you can't, you never be good, nope, you, you not, you got dropped before, you never gonna, and it's just like, you, it's so much unwarranted hate that you get for wanting to be better, like, where, what part of the game is that? I ain't never, I ain't never like, it's a whole nother generation, like, you, you got haters, but now it's like hyper haters, like, you know what I'm saying, like a hyper speed. Like you can't even if I be on if I go on Twitter be like man I dream to one day be great, it's gonna be more people be like you never ever don't ever say you're gonna be like Jay Z ever in life you suck, it's just because like it's like a hyper more of aggression like self loathing and I see it come from people that look just like me dress like me and everything you know what I'm saying like it's so much can't 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 happening right now. Well, you say they love you differently when when you're on the top. I took that as addressing really the, yeah. the intense hate that you might get? Yeah, um, you know, when, when that, when, as far as love, hate goes, I was more talking about the earlier chapters in my career when I was at, I was 20 years old, trying, I was, I, my back was against the wall against everything local in DC, like I was the one. You know, they put me on that pedestal and I, you know, I had to deal with that as a, like, damn near a child, for real. Yeah. Um, speaking of, uh, you know, when you first started, I remember when you started, it was a lot of go-go, um, on this album, I hear some African, I hear some reggae, you know, just some club records. It's eclectic. Well. Yeah, I very. like saying that word. <laughs> <laughs> um, what influenced you on this album, The Gifted? You know, it's 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 cohesive too. I might add, it's it's not all over the place. Right. It's very cohesive. I think it might be my most cohesive project. You know, Attention Deficit was just that. It was like a. The ADD like kid with a budget, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. right. <laughs> so um, the inspiration behind this, like, I was just trying to tell a story. I was really like, I made the gifted like a story. Like, there's so many gems in there that you can listen back and hear. Like, if you listen to the end of bricks, you hear me like, the dealers in the back, the clappers to the front, and then I go to clappers. Or you hear the curse of the gifted. You hear Stokely singing, you can hate it or love it. I will keep pushing on. You can hate it or love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And then you go to love hate. You know what I'm saying? Or you hear the end of uh, 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 Sunshine. Uh, you hear me saying we ain't posted, never had nothing, and then you go to Heavens in the Afternoon. So, like, I did that. I, I, I wanted to sequence it, like, almost like a musical. Like, a, like, like you can close your eyes and see everything that's happening. Like, you know, the whole album is about what inspired me and who and who and what, you know, and telling my story in the process. So, you know, that was definitely, like, I'm not gonna say like I was like bumping that like that heavy when I was like a kid because I was way before my time. But like once I started to appreciate the art form more, like I say like you know early high school, late high school, like when I started appreciating it and going back and getting the old albums and stuff like that, you know I was really letting it inspire me. And I was really letting it like teach me new ways to rap. So you know I wanted to you know pay homage to that on Simple Man. Okay. What other inspirations did you have on the album? Like I said, it's it seems to have a lot of different influences. Were there any specific? You know one thing that didn't inspire me this album? What? Girls. Yeah? Girls ain't inspired me at all on this album. And it's important that if there's any aspiring artists in here, you know, it's important if y'all take nothing else for this, realize I got a Grammy nomination, a platinum single off of like girl songs and radio is always gonna add my girl songs, but I ain't do it. I didn't do the conventional ones because my heart wasn't in. I ain't. Right. I wasn't in love this year. I wasn't. There was no girl that I met that made me want to write about her or anything like that. And I didn't want to force it. It's very important. Like you got to make. The only song that I'm kind of touching on, like girls, is tired of dreaming, and it's because I'm 
literally like tired. I'm dreaming of somebody that's worth writing about. You know what I'm saying? Um, and like, you know, I didn't stick with what worked technically because I wanted to, to, to follow my heart on this album. Now, how hard is it for you? I mean, I've watched your journey for quite some time. I mean, Young Guru was the first person that told me about you, and that was a long time ago. And, um, but now the stakes are so high for artists. I mean, it's, it's like, pre you know, it's like the fourth quarter, and you like throwing a Hail Mary sometimes with the fickleness of the audience. Yeah. You, rappers is right, putting their face on the side of buildings now. Yeah. To say, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's cold as hell, but shit. Now, how am I going to compete with that? Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's, real, it's real out here. It's real. Like, this music thing is like, it's, it's really with lives within everybody in here to like really keep it. You know, I don't see Garth Brooks with his face on the side of a joint or Tim McGraw. Them niggas is, I mean, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> they, sell, they, they sell the rockets. So like, it's, it's just rough. Uh, this this urban environment, this urban community, is tough to win y'all over, man. So you don't ever feel compelled to conform a little bit, like it ain't no more rules now. Yeah. It ain't no more, and like you gonna start seeing like the the elite artists, like they really going like some of the, some of these radio people are gonna be sick in the, in the next couple of years because like they've been bullying us for a minute. Yeah. Some of them like you gotta do this at the radio station, you got you gotta do this here, do that there. You know, and, and people have been abusing that power. Right. But like, you got guys like Jay-Z and Eminem and like those guys have been taking it away. Like, you know what, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it for the fans. I ain't gonna do it for you media outlets or, or none of that. Well, that's good and that's a great thing. A absolutely. So speaking of which, speak on New Black Soul. What's, what is that to you? What does it mean to us, you know, as listeners? It, it mean I can dance on stage if I want to. I can feel like I'm James Brown. That could spit though, like. <laughs> so um, the sounds though, you know, like you got you got you got songs like uh, Sunshine, where it's like kind of like that '70s soul vibe. You got you got a uh, um, love hate thing, which is also in that '70s vein. You got Tired of Dreaming, which is like, like I told Neo to give me '80s Michael Jackson. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um, the whole album is just inspired by soul. Even when I'm sampling my own voice on 88, like I'm, you know, I'm singing my own stuff. So it's like, everything that could be the, the, the known as black soul, I try to take elements of it. Even, even Simple Man, that's, that's, that was the soul from the golden era of rap. You know, even Clappers, that's DC soul. You know, so I just made it all, I put it all in one thing and just, you know, called it New Black Soul. My favorite, well, one of my favorite, I, it might be my favorite, is um, Jesus Peace, Jesus uh -huh. Peace. Um, can I don't want to? I want you to explain the concept behind it, and and let us know what inspired you to write that record. It's a golden era type of record. It's crazy because, well. like, man, I was in a I was in a super like spiritual place when I wrote that. I was fasting and everything when I wrote that song, and uh, like if you've ever fasted before, you know you'd be real irritated, like. You know what I'm saying? So I remember, I remember one day, like, I heard the beat, and I went, walked in the studio, and I just started writing it. it. It didn't take me no time, you know? And I all my vices were not used to make, none of my vices were used to make that record. <laughs> so, um, but you know, you know, I, I did it, and I just looked up, and like, I listened to it one day, and I was like, yo, that's really special, you know what I'm saying? But there go, it was like an inner battle within myself, like, is the people even going to get it? Like, are they even going to care? You know what I'm saying? Like, I had numerous conversations with so many people about where hip hop is and like, do people still care about lyrics and songs like that? Like, you know, when Nas made I Gave You Power, like, would that even fly today? Or would they be like, oh, this is recycling bin music. Uh, this sucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I just did it. I followed my heart on that record and I just, I just did it. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I'm glad, you know, for the most part, the reception has been great for that record and people is understanding what I'm talking about. If you don't know, it's me basically uh, transforming myself into that Jesus chain right there and just being like, if I could be a chain for a day or two, what would he say? What would the, what would the Jesus uh, chain say if he could talk? Yeah, it's, a, it's pretty deep. You really have to, yeah, you, you really have to hear it to, to fully understand it. So, so we'll leave it right there. Um, your crew, mm -hmm. 
uh, Rick Ross and, and MMG. Yep. Um, you guys are definitely one of the most powerful uh, crews out in hip hop right now. How how competitive are you guys? I ain't talked to none of them when I was making my album. <laughs> I ain't I ain't talked to Ross until I was done. Like I, you know, we just get in that mode. Like when Ross was real, doing his last album, like he wouldn't even let us hear it until it was done. Like, you know, we we a team, no. But like you know, when it's time to go, we all we made ourselves rich in the first place. So it's like you ain't even gonna talk to nobody when when it's time to cook up. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody get missing. Everybody get missing. Yo, me. Hello? <laughs> Everybody know what time it is when they got their solo projects, man. It's another monster. I almost missed Rick Ross on the album. I was yeah. like listening to the whole album. I was like, what? where is yeah, he? Yeah, he, he snuck in there. Yeah. <laughs> he snuck in there at the last second. But now nah, he know what it is, though. Like, he knows I'm on Maybach. I'm like the, the resident weirdo. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, he knows, like, oh, everybody. It was like an APB out on me for a week. Like, where is Wale? Like, Khaled, everybody trying to call me. I'm like, yo. I ain't showered in three days. I'm in the studio, man. Don't bother me. I'm almost done with this jump. That's what's up. One thing I noticed, you made it clear that when you made the switch uh, from Rock Nation to MMG, which I think was a was was a huge risky move. Well, no, that's more that's, if that was Interscope to MMG. Oh, Rock Nation is always always gonna be there. What management? And that's like the biggest misconception. Everybody thinks I'm like, like I literally go from a Jay Z meeting to a Rick Ross meeting. Like yeah. that's my life. Like you know what I'm saying? Like one is. One helps me with the business moves. So we thank Jay-Z for bringing me to Apple today. Right. <laughs> and we thank Rick Ross for the music that y'all are hearing at Apple today. That's the best way to explain it to you. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. So um, let's get to uh, 88. You mentioned that. Now you sampled yourself on there. You yeah. want to preview, you know, give us a little insight on what you were doing when you made um, this record? You know, I like, to, I like to tell stories using a lot of, like, clever wordplay and stuff like that. Like... That's kind of like my niche or my thing. Uh, 88 is just I'm, just, I'm really giving you like a, the, the chronological events that occurred to get me where I'm at, you know, uh, and what, I've, what I'm dealing with. You know, I lost a deal, got with Will, he's seen a genius, you know, that's real. William Roberts, AKA, right, right, <laughs> Rick Ross, right. like he, he, he believed, he was like, yo, you can do this yourself. Like you don't even need this company that ain't really focusing on hip hop anymore. You can come over here and do what you want to do. You know, he kind of shook knighted the whole situation, like on some pot, like he bailed me out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just started getting busy ever since then. So, you know, 88 is just like a feeling like, you know, I tried to, I looked, I watched the footage of Michael Jordan, like about to do the, the free throw line jump. And I'm like, yo, what is he thinking about? What, what, what is he feeling? What did it feel like to do that at that particular moment? You know, and I'm on my third album, so. A lot of the like divine intervention things came to me when I made that. I'm like, my third album, I feel like an icon, or I could be. All right, let's do this one one time for all the you know all the heads over there that know what I'm talking about. It's a special clique of people that understand this song all the way thoroughly. '88 was a huge year for hip hop too. Like that was like a, a classic year where like a lot of incredible albums came out. So it's a fitting title in a in a broader perspective too. It's important to me like. Man, I had, Just Blaze is is a elusive, yeah, <laughs> yes, elusive is. individual. You know what I'm saying? But I, I mean, it was worth it, man. Like I, I'd, I'd, I'd have done what I did for that record ten times over to get it done, cause it make me feel the way every time I hear the record. Like it, it, my core fans really know what that that joint is for real. Did Michael Jordan have anything that you know? He went to D.C. eventually. Um, you know, were you there to see him play? Or man, I couldn't afford them tickets again. Right. No, he came was it, was it two years. Well, how long he played for, for? Like a year, right? I felt crazy. I don't even know how long Michael Jordan played for us. But his the, the shoes was good when he came out the 17th. Right, right. You mentioned. I've heard you say, if I'm not mistaken, our generation is cursed. Right. Yeah. Can you speak on that a little bit? Like, it's just so much power we we give. Like, it's just it's it's anonymous people got so much power in our generation. Like, somebody could be like, "Yo, while they brought an alien out at the Apple Store," and then like, there's there's really some blogs that I picked that up right. and be like, "Yo, while they messing with aliens now, like, what, like it's we get we've given anonymous non credible sources so much power over what we you know what I'm saying like look at media takeout like." They not even, 
But it's people that refresh their joint. They can't wait to hear the, the next piece of gossip. Right, right. And it's like, it's that's crazy. We live in a crazy world, man. Definitely. So we're about to go to get your questions ready because we're about to go to Q and A. We got one more since you mentioned it. There's a record called Gullible that is, it's hilarious, but it's also a little bit sad in a, in a lot of ways because you're speaking on how people do kind of fall for these tricks. Rap or, music is nothing more than like, like, like like philosophy with a bunch of sugar over it. You know what I'm saying? Like that was one thing Jerry Seinfeld told me. Yeah, I name drop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing he told me though. He was like, it's just, you know, comedy is the same thing. It's like, it's just, it's just like philosophies with like a bunch of sugar around it. You know what I'm saying? And I was, I really wanted to make a condescending record. I really wanted to be like, yo, if you're listening to this, I'm talking to you, idiot. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I just, it's just what it was. Like, our generation is a little bit weird. Like we, we just believe anything. Like anything we believe. Like anything we see on internet or TV, we believe it before we, you know, we question it. Right, right. Okay. So uh, put your hand up. This is the fun part. Yay. Okay. I know the um, gift that just came out, mm -hmm. but um, when is the album about Damn. nothing coming out? You see? <laughs> Look. Look, Apple, which I did. And all this technology, they just think I'll just spit out raps and just all day. I gotta it gotta I gotta be patient with that. Like that's a that's that's a third version of something that was very important to me. I've solidified my first record deal with more I mean mixtape on nothing. I got a second record deal off the strip of mixtape on nothing. So the album by nothing gotta be like I'm taking my time with it though, cause I know y'all fans ain't gonna let me hear the end of it if it, it ain't as good as the I know, I know, I know. I ain't rushing it. I got third, 16 songs to go play with for a little while. Is that the next album, yeah, that's definitely the next album. It was gonna come the fourth quarter this year, but I play ball with the record label. I ain't trying to ruin nobody else's release date on Atlantic Records. <laughs> what got you into uh, collecting kicks? Shoot, man, like the not having it at first. <laughs> the not having it, you know. And, you realize a lot about sociology and social statuses in elementary school. You realize that, like, you don't know what you're learning, but you know there's something going on. Like, why, why my junk got a dude doing a layup and your dude's jumping, dunking on yours? <laughs> you know, so you learn about that. So, you know, it's the, you know, I think we all feed into like materialism early. You know what I'm saying? But mine's became more of a love. Like, as I got older, the art, you know, like and like the, the conception behind sneakers and stuff like that. Like, but it's always anti-hype though, always. You with the lime green tank top on. That was smart to wear that joint. Yeah, you got more county back here, boy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, I hope y'all didn't drive all the way from home though. No. Oh, okay, all right. Hey. I ain't worth all that four hours. And hey, how many sneaks you got? I'm embarrassed to say. A couple, yeah. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. My accountant would really, 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 really have a word with me if I said that out loud. So I, uh, I saw you the Jordan Brand Classic in 2005, my first uh, Remember rap Remember me and Cuddy? Yeah, yeah. I was, yep. sitting, I was sitting next to Irv Gotti, actually. It was pretty funny. Crazy. Anyways, uh, I was wondering if, um, since I haven't heard you rap since then, we could get you to spit something acapella right now. I would. But you didn't see how my brain is set up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, you know what? I wish I could do one of them like Kanye moments and like, yo, or something, and everybody be like, yo. I just, it just would. Be, I wouldn't even feel comfortable. I wouldn't even feel comfortable. I don't even have any new raps. You guys, there's a hundred million raps on my album. Y'all are making me feel what? Next question, yo. Who's gonna defend me right now? Be like, he good. You gonna defend me? <laughs> She's like, no, no. Rap fans are sp y'all are spoiled people, man. Spoiled and nobody from Apple is trying to help me. They all like. I got one right here in the back row. Back row is gonna bail you me. out right here. Yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> what sets you apart from uh, all the other rappers? That's what the yada just said. I think I'm. I think I'm a, a genuine article, the one on one. But it's up to the people. I can't really, you know. I think there's a lot of things about me. Like, I don't think these niggas can, I mean, I don't think these rappers can dress. I don't think they fly. I don't think none of that. I just think they're good at rap. That's my opinion, but I don't, 
What makes you like? I think I'm deeper. I think I I take more time writing my. I, I come up with quadruple entendres that go over everybody's heads until two, three years later. That's what I think make me different. But it's really up to the people. So. Okay, so I know you said that you have a chip on your shoulder. With the success of um, the gift of being number one, has that somewhat no. relieved you? No. Nope. Okay. I'm crazy. That's why I'm alone. I'm a lonely man. Next question. Yeah. Um, that wanna, scared me. I want to know why you keep naming your mixtapes about nothing. Uh, it's just a series. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, I had 11-1-11, half alarm mixtape. Uh, so it's just like a series, though, you know, and it, the fans is really, really into it. So yeah, because it's, it don't really seem like it's about nothing; it's about something. There you go. Somebody gets it. Nah, that's that was the point, though. That you know, I'm used to it, though. Niggas don't be understanding. Though. So how much did um, stemming from a West African background affect you? You know what? My my my, my taste in music is just that way. Cause when when I was a little boy. We ain't had like we ain't had no babysitter or nothing. So like, you know, you, African parents they don't believe in like car seats and none of that. Like, <laughs> I, I was just riding in the front. My dad was driving DC cabs and I was just riding. Like, whoever was in there could listen to whatever they want. So I would listen to country music and I'd be having these melodies and I'd be singing them, or I listen to go go or rap or whatever was you know. So that was that's pretty that's probably my number one influences as far as like having a whole worldly outlook on, on music. But I definitely, you know, I grew up in that house where it was nothing but Sunny Ade and Fela and all that playing all day and Bob Marley and Peter Tosh and all that. Um, oh, what up, Bali? What's up? Uh, what does it take out of life to be so great, as you said before in the interview? I try to be great. I don't know. You know, a lot of people tell me I ain't great all the time. But... I just think it's the desire to want it. You got to you got you desire to want it. Like I'm one thing rap has enabled me to be friends with people that are like genuinely successful. You know what I'm saying? And I look at dudes like Jay or or Rose or even like Lee or Cohen or people like, you know what I'm saying, that aren't necessarily rappers. Like it's just a desire. Look at Kevin Durant. Like that's one of my real friends in real life. Like he's in the gym now. Like right now probably. Like he got, he's in the gym now. If he could put a gym in his car, he'd put one in his damn car. Like, it's just the desire to want to be, like, beyond. You know what I'm saying? Even Kobe, like, I remember we was touring overseas, and Jay told me the thing about Kobe that makes him so great is he'll, he'll work till he can't physically do it anymore. And that's what separates good from great. Let's go, Wale. Shout out to Nigel, by the way. Okay, my All man, right. my brother. Um, I just had a quick question. I, I know you spoke about your family a little bit. Um, I don't hear you say too much about them. Uh, how, how is you and your family? That's my real question. Good. You know, I'm, I grew up like most Nigerian kids, though. Like, you're going to say you want to be a rapper. They be like, oh, you want to be an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> Foolish boy. <laughs> Look at you. You, you, you. Until that first check come home. Like, oh, so you are rapping now. Everything is going good for you. And... Life is good. <laughs> and I go to the church of my mom, and then, like, you know, it becomes a Wale concert in a joint. So, no, it's good, though. You know, we got our issues like every other family do, but I try to leave a lot of that out of music because they're easy to locate, man. <laughs> my family's easy to locate. Um, I know you said we're never, like, satisfied with music, but um, I think your first album, Attention Deficit, was, like, the best, at least... My opinion. Mm -hmm. Will you ever get back to like that go go music like Clappers go go? Huh? Clappers is go go. Oh, like I like the I like the tracks like uh World Tour and Beautiful Bliss and you know, Shades. I love, oh, yeah. I couldn't wait to have one of these conversations. I'll be having them on Twitter. I'm like <laughs> I'm about to, you ready for this? No, I mean like Nah, are you ready? <laughs> can you can you, Hold as, on at least as a so, side so, project. So 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 let me get this right. What do the attention deficit have that you don't hear right now? I mean, in your opinion. I mean, you always used to say back then that that's that DMV sound and whatnot, and I really liked it, you know? You know what Marvin Gaye's from? Beats to it. You know what Marvin Gaye's from? No. no. From DC. There's a song called Love Hate Thing, right? Yeah, I like them. I like them. I mean, I still like your music, but I think... <laughs> nah, I just... I'm go you're going to get it for all the, all the sins of the, the previous t t trolls on Twitter. Uh, you're going to get it. Uh, Listen, uh, all I'm going to say, this is one of the biggest, like, misconceptions like my music changed like I can't listen to let it loose 
off attention deficit. I can't like you know what I'm saying. I can't listen to that song. It's just dated. It wasn't. You know what I'm saying. Like me and my manager. Like I love Pharrell. Obviously, like he's one of the legends. But like even the way that song was conceived, like it was like Rich was at the deadline of making the album, and it, <laughs> they just brought the record in. It's like yo, put this on the album. I'm like okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't do stuff like that no more. Like even chilling. Chilling ain't sound like that when I first did it. Like it sounds different, but the label told me to make it their way. So it's like when people say your old stuff is bad, I'm like, well, what, what, what part? Because it's like I've always been doing go go. There's a go go representation on every one of my projects, ever. Bait. But people like to tell me what go go is. I'll meet with this magazine, like, well, why don't you go back to your go go? Well, when's the last time you went to a go go? Because last time I heard bait is. The original version of Bait is was one of the biggest go go songs in, in the streets in DC, and I flipped it. So it's like, you know, I enjoy those. I, that's why I respond to people on Twitter because I want to hear that. I, I love to hear like your old stuff better. Are oh, you talking about when I used to rush my raps? I used to rush. I used to be in a studio and be like, oh, Nike Nike got a new release today. Oh, okay, I'm gonna just do these raps real quick and then go shopping in Soho all day. You know what I'm saying? But now I stay. I stay there. I stink. I ain't done nothing. I'm just staying there. No girls visiting me, nothing. I'm just in the studio working, trying to make it better than, you know, the nostalgia. I think part of it is the nostalgia, though. A lot of people like when they, the moment when they first discovered a J. Cole or the first discovered a Wale or first discovered Drake. Like, you hold those moments near and dear to you because you remember where you was at in life. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, I remember this girl. Oh, uh, when when while they dropped Pretty Girls and it was new and I had put her on to it and and then I remember when I could just download it and the net the, the internet wasn't crashed because it's it's just all these components that make up to people to believe that the old stuff was like better. I listen to my old stuff and I'm like I will wrap circles around that dude. I don't even know who that is for real. I was just looking at him. I just was looking at him. I was like I hope he asked me something. Yeah. What's up, Wale? How you What's doing, up, bro? Man? Chilling. Um, quick question, best and worst part of fame? Fame's creepy, yo. Like, if you don't like creepy stuff, don't become famous. Like, <laughs> niggas will follow you home, like, on some, like, honestly, like, we, we'll have a show and it'll be 30 minutes away from the hotel and we'll go through all the back roads and, you know, ski slopes and everything to get to our hotel and then you get out the car and then somebody's just waiting there like... <laughs> <laughs> With a, pic with a picture of you that you didn't even know that you ever took. <laughs> right. And it's like, well, like, can you sign this? And you just, you're really scared. Like, how did you even know I was here? <laughs> and and that's, that's what fame is to me. That's why I, like, I, I got like this anti-fame like thing. Like, it, it freaks me out for real. All right, um, what up, Wally? What's up? All right, my favorite mixtape you ever did was eat, like more about nothing. Like, I like the way you put like the Seinfeld bits in it or whatever. And I was wondering, like, when you're going to put more of that, like, because, like... Album about nothing. Coming very, 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 very soon. Now, the second question I have for you is, like, see, like, your sneaker game is, like, ridiculous. Like, every time I see, like, yo, I'm about to get this sneaker or whatever, go on Google, type it up. I see Wally <laughs> on stage walking in there. I'm like, oh, man, like, who's, like, you got connects, like, all over the U.S.? Like, what's your connect? That's a good question. I don't have any anymore. One of my connects is in here. I ain't gonna point him out. He don't even work for Nike no more. But he was, he, we had a good run, man. We had a great, great run. Now I, I, I'm just like everybody else now, man. No connects. Go on. I, um, I wanted to know um, why, you did the, why you did that Tiger Woods song? Stories. Hip hop about stories, man. I just wanted to show my, my showcase my ability. I like to show off. I think I'm one of the greatest rappers living right now. So. I wanted to write a story unconventional about something relevant at the time, and that's why I did the Tiger Woods jump. She's got to ask her a question. Okay. All right. So, do you remember your concert you just did? And I asked you for a towel, and you looked at me, and I did not get my towel. You straight threw it to the other side of the room. I was so mad. Fame. Well, like, can I have, can I have my towel? Ladies please? and gentlemen, fame. <laughs> Exhibit A, B, and C. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm human. I'm super human in real life. I don't 
I don't, you saw, follow me on Twitter. Y'all know I be having my moments and shit. I'm human. Well, here's your moment. The Gifted, congratulations, number one in the country. Thank you everybody who bought it. If you need to set up an iTunes account, 